This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Karen Reed and the trial of Karen Reed. Well, we're going back to that discussion because a lot of the jurors have come out and said, wait a second here. Um, we, we did find her innocent. Not uh, we'd ever put it down on paper, but we did unanimously in that uh, in that uh, jury room find her innocent on counts one and three. Count two being the manslaughter that they were hung up on. So now the question is, can they retry Karen Reed on all those counts if they want to? Because the judge declared a mistrial. There was never a polling of the jury. Lots of questions since she's going back to the courtroom to see what's going to happen there. And as of this recording, uh, that has not yet happened. Joining me to discuss Jennifer Coffindaffer, retired FBI special agent. Uh, Jennifer, what do you make of all of this and the possible paths forward for Karen Reed and this uh, possible upcoming trial again? Tony, I do not believe that this is going to serve as a double jeopardy situation. There was no verdict rendered. I know jurors have come forward, but again, we haven't seen any official affidavits from jurors. And so until that happens, and even after that happens, if it does happen, we're not going to see any uh, any change, I don't believe. We're going to forge on, and this is why it's been decided at the Supreme Court level. There's multiple cases that indeed, unless an official jur- or jury verdict is rendered, it's not a verdict. And this judge has already said there was no verdict. Why why was there no polling? Why was there there no option for them to to render those verdicts in the first place? Well, there were options and they could have done that, um, but they didn't. Uh, I don't know why. I've always said whenever you're back in those uh, jury rooms, according to jurors, they bargain and they negotiate. So it could have gone something like this. Listen, we'll vote. You know, she's not guilty on this, but we want to get the guilty on this. Mm -hmm. So in other words, did they all agree to go with the no on the second degree murder in bargain for the manslaughter? Mm -hmm. And then when three jurors held out on the manslaughter, they said, well, forget it. Mm -hmm. It's it's not going to be we're deadlocked. We're not going to, you know, approve that. We don't know if that's what happened. All I know is that does happen. Is there a chance that we're going to see, like in the Alec Murdoch case, uh, we obviously saw the jurors come back and it was for a different matter. It was uh, the possibility of jury tampering with the clerk of court, but they all ended up going back into the courtroom to to talk about their experiences to see if there actually was uh, jury tampering there. Is there something here where, where they could be called back in and and you could get affidavits from all of them saying, yes, this is what we we all thought? Um, even though it's after the fact, after the the uh, verdict has been rendered of uh, of a mistrial? I don't think we will see that happen. Um, you know, and everyone who has purportedly come forward has wanted to do it under the veil of complete anonymity mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. This, uh, you know, the people in this area and the individuals who are involved in this have been unbelievable uh, there's outstanding jury tampering chart or excuse me harassment charges mm-hmm. and there's outstanding charges uh you know concerning intimidation and it's clear that these jurors are indeed afraid mm-hmm. uh, to come forward and that's why judge canoni says listen we're going to seal up everything to do with their names now remember in the in the Murdoch case, we saw something a little similar to this, where his defense attorneys went out and actually were knocking on doors and, and trying to get statements from the jurors. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, that didn't work either. Uh, the problem is, it's sort of like the football game's completely over. Everyone signed off on it. And then, in other words, whoever won or no contest or end of play and then you go back and try to recreate it. That will never happen. And mm-hmm. again, there's case precedent 
Uh, there's been precedent where individuals in the courtroom have even tried to give a verbal verdict. And unless everyone signs and unless a verdict is rendered, it's not really rendered, Tony. Yeah. Was it an was it an error on the part of the judge to not, I guess, uh, or you know, cross all the T's and, and dot all the I's or, or or was this not even in that? I mean, did she cross all the T's and dot all the I's? Could she have, should she have pulled the jurors uh, on this or, or asked a question in a little bit greater detail? Or, I mean, again, these are, they're well, lay people. That's... These are not attorneys. So did they know that they, they needed to communicate it in this way? Well, first of all, that's not the judge's job. Mm -hmm. The judge's job is not to become a juror. <laughs> sure. You know, they're not supposed to be involved in deliberations or involved in anything like that. Once a verdict is rendered and you're asked, so say ye all, in some states, uh, you know, a judge is allowed to poll and mm -hmm. say, judge, or, you know, juror one, juror two, to see if everyone agrees. There was no verdict here. And she made that very clear. So while we don't know what the discussions were, uh, we know that the judge was told we're deadlocked. We can't come up with an opinion. And so for that reason, it was declared a mistrial. And if you'll recall, she tried her darndest to get a verdict out of these jurors. Mm -hmm. And the, the prosecution pushed hard. If you look back, who was sort of salivating at the mouth, if you look at that footage, was the defense team. Okay. All right. We'll take it. <laughs> so while it wasn't perfect for them, it's really a quasi win uh, whenever you don't get a guilty verdict for mm -hmm. your client. So, you know, they get to start with a clean slate again. And, you know, they were the ones pushing to go forward. And then I find all of this quite interesting. They know the law in this area. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to be reversed, Tony. Yeah. Want more of the podcast without the ads? Then hit subscribe to the True Crime Today Premium Plus channel on Apple Podcasts. Try it now for three days absolutely free. You'll get access to all of our extended advanced ad-free episodes instantly. So you can binge without the break. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search and subscribe now on Apple Podcasts.